the angry reaction to the album and to the Christian fervor of the lyrics was not simply a matter of music criticism. The release of Slow Train had unhappily collided with a growing hostility within the US towards Christian didacticism. American religious groups had, since the mid-70s, been attempting to form a national political force that would pervade media, social institutions and government. Organizations such as the Moral Majority rallied believers in an assault on the liberal values of the 60s and the cultural movements in which Dylan himself had played such a prominent role. With the presidential election imminent, the Christian right had massed its forces behind the campaign of Republican Ronald Reagan, and progressives everywhere were duly alarmed. The religious conversion of Bob Dylan, high priest of the counterculture, was received by a large section of his audience as a defection, a betrayal, an abdication from duty. Even as Dylan went off in a kind of aesthetic direction, people still had a great believer in him as a, as a voice of social protest. His embrace of fundamental Christianity really seemed to contradict all that and just outraged people. I mean, people were really angry. You know, it also correlated intriguingly with a kind of rightward swing in, in America. You know, Ronald Reagan was coming into power and there was this sense of the 60s kind of disappearing or a little bit under assault. So Dylan going over to the other side is what it seemed like. It just seemed like a great betrayal. I mean, I think people always thought there was a spiritual feel in Dylan's music and a kind of spiritual aspiration to it. But to embrace this very, very conservative, fire and brimstone approach to Christianity just seemed ridiculous in a way and a kind of insult to people's intelligence. It seemed very un -Dylan like It seemed very unhip, absolutely unhip. I mean, that is extremely important, I think, in, uh, uh, for all the other issues. You know, it didn't seem cool. It didn't seem cool to anybody to be a fundamentalist Christian. In the winter of 1979, with Slow Train enjoying strong sales figures, Dylan embarked on a new tour. The set list was stripped of all his pre-Christian work and the shows loosely resembled gospel performances. Renditions of songs from Slow Train Coming and a forthcoming album, Saved, were interspersed with impromptu sermons that often provoked loud antagonism between Dylan and sections of the crowd. Though the watching press delivered damningly hostile notices, the concert saw Dylan discover an energy and enthusiasm that had been absent from his 1978 appearances. And certainly the shows he gave in 79-80 are, as a, as a body of, so, of concerts, um, would be... Um, his, his greatest ever, uh, certainly better than 66. Um, for consistency, better than 75, 76. I mean, they are extraordinary shows. And the passion of Dylan's vocals and his commitment to what he's doing um, is, has never been more on his sleeve than, than those shows. Uh, he had a couple of very bad run-ins with audiences, uh, which, which are amazing to hear. They really are extremely... Uh, violent, uh, not physically violent, but uh, in terms of what people are, are, are haranguing each other in the audience. Dylan's absolutely spitting venom at these people. You know, at one point he says you can rock and roll all the way down to the pit. I mean, you know, this, this is the guy who reinvented rock and roll. You know, the man who was almost single-handed responsible for modern rock and roll, <laughs> telling everyone who believed in it that they're gonna rock, that they're gonna burn in hell. For eternity, it was. Uh, it, it really was a, a defining moment. Um, but uh, but there's no way back from that. Um, I think people. He made people feel uncomfortable in a way that they never came to terms with. The last time Bob Dylan was here in the mid '60s, it was much different. The music was different. The time was different. And the biggest difference, you don't walk out in the middle of a Dylan concert. Some people did last night. He talked about religion. He preached. Is that why you walked up? That's why I walked down. Yeah. He stinks. Man. He's the worst. He's bad. You don't sing nothing like you used to. That's it. You walked on. Yeah, it's a waste of my Here's a ticket. Here, you want the ticket? I paid twenty six dollars going there and see a show. And uh I could have went to church to see what I saw, you know. I mean, I don't know. I just I expected something different. Well, the people who really felt upset about Dylan embracing Christianity, you know, they didn't mind when he was being judgmental about other people. So, the, but now he was kind of being judgmental about them and their secularism and their hip attitudes and 
all of that stuff. And that was a problem also. There was a kind of, you know, it was a very classic Dylan move in a way. You know, even as, even as it, it seemed off any kind of coordinates that you had ever mapped for him, you know, with the passage of time, you could see uh, the kind of sense it made in terms of who he was. Because he's turned on his audience so many times. And this was one of them. And it was, um, but the audience wasn't ready for it. I mean, they rarely are. But in particular this time, it was a brawl. And the growing ill will towards Dylan's salvation even surfaced amongst his peers, with John Lennon recording Serve Yourself as a taunting riposte to Gotta Serve Somebody. Dylan's faith held steadfast against the circling winds, bolstered by a Grammy Award for Gotta Serve Somebody in the Best Male Vocalist category, and he returned to Muscle Shoals in 1980 to complete sessions for his latest evangelical project, Saved. 